Welcome to another edition of Question and Answer with a Criminal Defense Attorney. I'm Mark Solomon, a defense attorney in Denver, Colorado. And today's question is about Lori Vallow and the death of her two children and competency. I forgot I changed the intro. <laughs> Look at that. Okay, so... Um, if you hadn't heard about it, Lori Vallow um, had two children. Um, they mysteriously disappeared in September of 2019. In February of 2020, that's last year, she was charged with their murders. Um, she was arrested in Hawaii and brought to justice. Now, um, looking at her case, um, this is the Wikipedia article on the deaths of her two children. And it talks all about, um, you know, what happened, what the, what's alleged. But today, what we're going to be talking about is the latest in the news, which is that a psychologist has declared that she is incompetent, um, not competent to stand trial. What is incompetence? As in, what does it mean to be not competent to stand trial? And the answer is, it's a really low bar where if you do not understand the roles of your own attorney, the, the prosecutor or the judge, or you're not in a position to be able to assist in your own defense because you don't understand what's going on or the charges against you, then you will not be competent. What does that mean going forward? Um, it means that if, um, first off, the person is committed, as in they don't get to get out. But um, the next thing that happens is that the psychiatric facility, usually um, a, one where you can't get out, it's a residential facility. It's no different than being in prison, but in a psychiatric hospital. They will work on restoration. And if at some point they find that you're competent, guess what? The prosecution resumes. Speedy trial is never an issue here. And um, the trial against you resumes. So what happened in Lori Vallow's case? A um, psychologist um, met with her in the jail for a couple days and found that she was not competent, submitted a report to the judge. The prosecutors have a right to object to that finding. So, um, you know, they can either agree with it. And at that point, she gets carted off to the mental hospital. Otherwise, they have what's called a competency hearing, and that's where they get have the right to get their own psychiatrist, a state psychiatrist, to challenge the results of the psychologist that the defense had. If the judge finds one expert more credible over the other or more persuasive or finds that, you know, um, in this case, Lori Vallow's defense attorneys had a psychologist do the competency evaluation for them. What if the state has a psychiatrist do it? Is that going to be more persuasive to a judge? I would think it would. So that's what happens next. And... Um, when you look at competency in general, I've done a bunch of these. This is where you look at a client and you say, this person is not in a mental state to be able to help in their defense. They don't understand what's going on. You raise competency. Here in Colorado, I've had this happen where um, if it's a, if it, uh, there's no such thing as a mild or a serious case, but in a less serious case, sometimes the prosecutors just decide to dismiss the case against the defendant. Not very often. Usually you get committed and this can happen in anything from a a misdemeanor up through a very serious felony. So that's a good question. Um, if you would like your own question answered in a future video, remember that you can always email me, tag me on Twitter, or um, put them in the comments below. And as always, you have a right to remain silent. If the police officers are asking you questions about who, what, where, or anything at all, you have a right to say, I don't want to talk to you. And if they persist, I want a lawyer. Thanks for watching. Keep those questions coming. I will answer everyone I get.